it's homework time, yes! Hep, hep, happy homework time is here yet again. Let's dive into lesson 15. Start off in the customary and correct manner of writing our names at the top of the paper. I'll write my name and you go ahead and write yours. And let's also jot down today's date. I will write today, you write the actual date where and when you are in this wondrous world of ours. All right, use the word bank. In number one, our instructions read to name each shape being as specific as possible. And that's an important instruction because uh, sometimes uh, these figures can fit the definition of more than one figure, but we want to be, use the most specific name. So when we look at this first one, these uh, little arrows here on these sides, what on earth do those mean? Uh, it means that the those sides are parallel. So when we look at this side, uh, it's parallel to this opposite side here, okay? However, these sides, of course, are not parallel. You can tell us by looking, but they're also not marked that way. So it would not be a parallelogram, which has two pairs of opposite uh, sides parallel, or the same is true of a rectangle and a square without even thinking about angles and such, just looking at that. Uh, when you look at these four choices, yes, indeed, that's our friend the trapezoid. Trapezoid has one pair of opposite sides parallel. And now this one has two pairs of opposite parallel sides. So it actually, that is true of the parallelogram, the rectangle, and the square. All three of those have opposite sides parallel, two pairs of them. Um, so we want to use the most specific name. Obviously, it's not a square. We don't have any right angles. We don't have four equal sides. It's not a rectangle because, again, we don't have right angles. So that narrows it down. Yes, indeed, it's the parallelogram. And to spell that, you start off with par, like in golf, you shoot for par. That's kind of a stretch. Okay, but hey, you know, let's let's just go with it. So par, and then you have the word all. Because the tricky thing about this word is not the par, but remembering where the double L is. So you have the word all in parallel, in parallelogram. And then just an E-L, so par, all, L. And the O-gram is easy enough. We talked about grams when we did metric conversion back in module two. And here's a happy little friend. Now these marks are not indicating parallel sides. They're indica indicating equality of these sides. So four equal sides. And although it's not marked, and honestly, Eureka mathematicians, it should be, um, we should at least know that one of these is a right angle. It would be nice to, if all four were noted, uh, which they did do in the rectangle here, because this could, I mean, I'm going to be a stickler here, Eureka. This could be a rhombus. Yeah, it looks like right angles, but in mathematics, we need to be a little more precise. But obviously, this is meant to be a square. Come on, we learned this in kindergarten, y'all. All right, and now this, did I already call this a rectangle? Yeah, and it's the only one left. Okay, so this is the rectangle. We have opposite sides are equal, opposite sides are parallel. We have four right angles. We're talking about a rect angle. Yo, that angle's rect. That was the worst joke ever. Thanks for being a part of it. Let's go on. All right, so numbers two, three, and four, we're explaining attributes, we're writing. Um, this is similar to uh, Lesson 14 homework, where we had to do a bit of writing. And so when it says explain the attribute, it just means the quality, the characteristic. Like, you have certain attributes. You're smart. You're good-looking. You're fabulous. Yeah. So those are your attributes. So we're going to explain the attributes, or the one, the attribute, uh, that makes a square a special rectangle. So in other words, what's the difference between a rectangle and a square? What is it that makes it a square and not just a rectangle, because a square actually is a specialized kind of rectangle. A square fits the definition of a rectangle, right? Um, but it has something else. So what is that something else that makes it a square and not just a rectangle? So, um, so a square has opposite sides. So first I'm going to say what they have in common. And let me tell you, don't be afraid of writing a bit here. Don't go for a, what's the shortest answer possible. 
And don't go for what's the longest answer possible either. Neither I nor your teacher are impressed by you like, oh, continued on, you know, 15 pages of notebook paper. So we're not looking for that. But you should have a complete answer. You should have an answer that makes sense and actually explains it. So not the shortest thing possible, but not the longest either. A complete answer. A square has opposite sides uh, equal and parallel, right? That's part of the definition. Remember, par, all, l for spelling, um, along with four, what about its angles? We talked about sides, okay, right angles, and that, that's what it has in common with a rectangle. What I just described, those attributes are common to both a rectangle and a square. Okay, a square has opposite sides equal and parallel along with four right angles, just like a rectangle. And the format I'm doing for this first one we can uh, kind of share with the next two as well. But now what's the difference? But a square, what is it that makes it a square? It's not just a rectangle, it has four equal sides, has all sides equal, has all, we could say either way, sides equal, or you could say four equal sides. I mean, by definition, has four sides. Okay, so now we're going to explain the attribute that makes a rectangle a special parallelogram, because again, a rectangle fits the definition of a parallelogram, but it has something else. Okay, so we're going to go with the same kind of format we did here. We're going to explain what they have in common first and then what distinguishes a rectangle. All right, this, this kind of answer shows that you really understand the attributes of these uh, shapes. Oh, so a rectangle has opposite sides. Now think about the sides. The opposite sides, so you know, if we're, we're looking at your standard kind of rectangle or parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal and they are also parallel, just like we had up, up uh, in that first one there. A rectangle has opposite sides equal and parallel. That's also true of a parallelogram. So we can put here, just like A pair all L gram. But what is it that makes it a rectangle now? Yes, it has four right angles. Okay. But also has four right angles. So you could just say right angles. I guess that would do it, but we're being more specific. And so now in the same way here, um, uh, uh, this one's slightly different because because there is more of a difference here um, than a similarity. So a trapezoid, by definition, has one pair of parallel sides, and it's one and just one. So um, a parallelogram is not a type of trapezoid, at least to my mind, if anybody wants to argue that with me. Um, and uh, write me a letter and mail it to British Airways. Explain the attribute that makes a parallelogram a special trapezoid. Okay, so think about it. A trapezoid, let's start, uh, or sorry, right, let's, let's start with a, a parallelogram. And let's start with the distinction. What was the attribute that makes a parallelogram? It has two sets or two pairs. of parallel sides, par, all, l, I want you to be able to spell that, where a trapezoid has only one. Okay, so, so that's what uh, distinguishes a parallelogram from a trapezoid, all right? 
sound pretty good. Uh, let's move on. You see, we're, we're cruising through this homework time. Let's keep cruising, y'all. And in number five, we have the following instructions. We're practically done. We just have four figures to draw here. Construct the following figures based on the given attributes. Give a name to each figure you construct, being as specific as possible, which we discussed already in the previous ones. So first on letter A, we're to draw a quadrilateral with four sides the same length and four right angles. Well, I have this handy dandy um, quadrilateral tool here, so I want four sides the same length. And see, I can actually look at my number of pixels there. Uh, oh, it's hard to get it just right. Oh, I did it. Have yeah, right. So there we go. Four sides the same length and four right angles. Come on, what is it? All right, I'm not going to pretend like we really have to discuss this and think about it. It's a square. All right, so now we have a quadrilateral with two sets of parallel sides. Two sets of parallel sides. Now, because it says nothing about the angles, the most specific we can be, because this would describe a square or a rectangle or a parallelogram, but because it says nothing about the angles, the most specific we can be is to say that this is a parallelogram, right? That we have two sets of parallel sides. So we have to assume it does not have right angles simply because it doesn't say so. So this is going to be a little bit more challenging for me to do freehand. So bear with me. All right, so. Zoop. And zoop. And zoop. All right, well, it's a little cockeyed, but hey, that's what you get for free. Okay, so, and I want to use the, remember we had the little, hey, this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side, even though I know it doesn't look like it. It's not bad, come on. So this is a parallelogram, par all l o gram. And that's as specific as we can be because we're not told in our definition that it has right angles. So we have to assume it does not. All right, let's uh, go on to C and D now. All right, round in the corner in homework time here. So next we're going to draw a quadrilateral with only one set of parallel sides. We were just talking about this. So again, I'm not going to pretend we really have to think about it. That's what, one set of parallel sides? Only one set. Right, so it's not a parallelogram, it's a trapezoid. So I'm going to get my broken line here. And I like to draw my trapezoids looking a little different from that standard textbook one. Um, so I'm going to start with a shorter side and then come down. See, so I'm giving it two right angles just to kind of show that it can look a little different. There we go. Not, not, a, not so bad there, huh? All right, and I'm going to do the little arrow-like figures to show, like, hey, these are parallel, those two sides. Um, and these don't have to be right angles. I drew them that way, but they don't have to be or not be right angles. It's irrelevant to the definition of a trapezoid, and that's what this is. So we're going to write it. It's a trapezoid. And now when we have a parallelogram with four right angles, now look, that could be a square, correct? It could be a rectangle. But notice that it doesn't, uh, or it could just be a parallelogram because it says a parallelogram. Um, but notice that it doesn't say anything about the lengths of the sides. So if it has four right angles and opposite sides are parallel, it could be a square. But since we're not given that in the definition, we have to assume this is a step back from a square. It's a rectangle, okay? So it would fit the definition of a rectangle only here. There we go. Boy, that was easy. Um, so this is a rectangle. We have uh, four right angles, so I'm going to draw those in. I'm doing it freehand. Because I'm free, freehanding, y'all, yeah. All right, and here's our parallel sides. And we have two sets of parallel sides. All right, and this is a rectangle. And this has the word angle in it, okay? So that's a parallelogram with four right angles. And look what you've done. 
Can you believe what you've done? You've gone and completed yet another homework time. Excellent work. I will see you again next time. It is once again homework time. Yeah.